In a previous video, we saw that a single diode acts like a rectifier, meaning it makes sure that charges only flow in one direction. But the problem is it does that by switching off the circuit when the charges are trying to flow in the opposite direction, which means for half the time it is switched on and half the time it is switched off. That's why it's called the halfway rectifier. But the problem with this is if you're charging a phone, say for example with this, then it'll take twice the amount of time for your phone to get charged because half the time it was the circuit was just switched off. It, in this video, we'll see how to build a full wave rectifier. A full wave rectifier is the circuit will be on all the time, switched on all the time, and still the current should flow or the charges should flow only in one direction through our, through our phone. Let's see how to do that. Well, if we just have one diode, and then you place it wherever you want, you place it here or here or whatever you want, you will see you can't make a full wave rectifier. It'll just act like this. To build a full wave rectifier, you at least require two diodes. So let's bring in a second diode over here. And let's think about how can we orient this diode and maybe we can get a full wave rectifier. Let's just play with this for a while. Let's try and explore. Maybe we take this diode and orient the same way as the diode we have down over here. What do you think will happen if we had a circuit like this? I want you to pause the video and think about what will happen. Well, it turns out in this case, nothing happens. There'll be no current at all through the battery. And the reason for this is you see, when the current tries to flow clockwise over here, this diode will conduct, so this diode will have no problems. It'll be green, but this diode won't conduct, so it'll be red. And now similarly, when the current tries to flow anti-clockwise, notice this diode will be green, that'll be forward by us, so this will be green but this will be red because this time you see the current trying to flow anti-clockwise won't work. And so this will be red. And that's why when one is forward by us, the other one will be reverse. And when one is reverse by us, the other one will be forward. And so this won't work at all. Hmm, maybe we can flip this diode. So let's see what happens if we flip that diode. We'll flip that diode over. And I want to again pause this video and see what do you think will happen in this case. Well now, when current is trying to be clockwise, notice both the diode will be forward by us. Both the diode will allow that. So both diodes will be green, and as a result, we'll have a current flowing, yay. But when the current tries to flow anti-clockwise, ah, uh, no. You see, again, both of these will be red, and so the current won't flow, and again, you'll get the same thing as a halfway rectifier. So this is still a halfway rectifier with just two diodes. Hmm, what do we do? So what people really did to get a full wave rectifier is something not very obvious to me. So I don't think we can work towards it logically. So I'll just tell you what they did. So their idea was, we'll first bring this diode back to the original orientation. Both of them will put them in the same way. Ooh, okay. So their idea was to, to take these two diodes and put them in a different circuit altogether, right? That was the idea. So how do we do that? Right now they're in the same circuit, right? So they thought to remove this, you know, this phone from here, so let's do that. So let's remove that phone from there, from this circuit. And remember, we want the current in this phone downwards. That's when the battery is charging, right? That's what we assumed. So let's flip it. Let's flip it like this. And let's make sure the orientation is exactly the same as the diode as well. And we'll keep it somewhere over here. So as of now, the phone is at removed from the circuit. And then we'll connect this wire, we'll connect this wire over here, and we'll take an additional wire from here and connect it to the phone, and another wire from here to here. So this is the circuit that people came up with. Well now you may be wondering, where did this wire come from? <laughs> well, this wire is attached to the center of the secondary winding. You got that? So you can just imagine that we are taking one wire and soldering it to the center of the secondary winding, that's it. And so what this does now is it allows two paths for the current to flow. So when the current is trying to flow clockwise, for example, you can have a clockwise flow here, or you can also have a clockwise flow here. That's, there are two paths. And similarly, when the current is trying to go anti-clockwise, you can have an anti-clockwise flow here, or you can have an anti-clockwise flow here. Both are possible. So now I really encourage you to again pause this video and try to see if you can figure out how this behaves as a full wave rectifier. Just think about this. All right, let's see. When the charges are trying to flow clockwise, notice in the above circuit, the diode will not allow that. It's in the opposite direction, right? So the above circuit diode will be red. It won't allow. But notice in the below circuit, 
the clockwise flow the diode allows. And so, during the clockwise motion, this circuit will be active. And so the current will flow only in this circuit. Similarly, when the charges are trying to flow anti-clockwise, the exact opposite happens. See, when the charges are trying to flow anti-clockwise, this circuit will be switched off. You see, this diode will not allow that. So that will be green, sorry, that will be red. But in the circuit above, when the charges try to flow anti-clockwise, notice this diode allows. So that will become green. And so the charges flow anti-clockwise in the above circuit. So when the charges are flowing clockwise, this circuit will be on. And when the charges are flowing anti-clockwise, this circuit will be on. So now let's look at the animation and see what happens. And now look carefully to the charges that are flowing through the battery, through the phone. Notice that in both the half cycles, the charges are flowing in the same direction. Can you see that? Same direction. We have achieved full wave rectification. All right, the last thing we'll do is to predict what will be the graph of the current versus time that's flowing through the phone in this full wave rectifier. Again, I want you to pause the video one last time and predict what the graph would look like. Well, the first thing is the current is flowing all the time, which means the circuit is conducting during both the half cycles, both the half cycles. But since the current is flowing always in the same direction, always in the same direction, what will happen? Well, let's, let's pause this animation for a while. So we just saw that the charges are only flowing through this phone in one and only one direction. And if we call that direction as positive, then you will get positive current. And you will again get positive current, regardless of what is going on over here. It doesn't matter whether it's flowing anti-clockwise or clockwise, the current through the phone is always going to be in one single direction. So we'll still get a current like this. Even here, we'll again get a current like this. So this will be the output of the full wave rectifier. And so this is no longer half wave. We'll rub this, and this now is full wave rectifier. Full wave rectified. All right, one last technical detail is that you see the transformer we used for this is a special one. Usual transformers only have two output wires, but now we have three output wires. There's an additional one that's taken from the center. So such transformers are called center tap transformers. Center tap transformers. So if you want to build a full wave rectifier with just two diodes, then we have to use this special kind of center tap transformer.